know, when you're up into into almost a thousand rads an hour, you're dead. So this, you know, this is going to be your nuclear power plant meltdown range is in here. Um, and she was pretty tight in that range. Hello and welcome back to Prepping 101 on Guns America. This week we're back on the topic of radiation and if you look through my old articles on radiation you'll begin to understand much of the misinformation out there about radiation and how radiation is measured. Most Geiger counters, which I've explained this many times before, most Geiger counters don't measure nuclear event level radiation. What you need for that is a very high level meter that will either work on, it works on a, a number of different principles that are not just a standard Geiger tube like you'll find in a, in a handheld Geiger counter. The, the cheapest way that I know of to get a high level meter, I've explained it on this column before, are, the, are these meters, the, the, CD, the civil defense meters. These are on eBay. This is a CDV uh, 720, which is actually fairly rare because it has a it has a calibration. It has a a beta beta radiation window, which is very uncommon. Um, but I just had this. Actually, this is my first one of these, and I just had this calibrated by Shane Connor, who is the KI for you guy. Um, he's been mentioned many times in this column. And the, the CDV-715, the CDV-717, and now I've, I've actually found some working CDV-720s on eBay. They are on eBay, eBay regularly, as little as $25. And when you buy them, you can send them directly to Shane, and they will calibrate them with their government-issued machine. Their government-issued machine uses cesium-137 to calibrate the meters. It's a lot of it. What you're hearing in the background here is my Nuke Alert ER. This is a, pro a, a product that Shane deliberately built to combat the fact that you cannot use those small electric handheld meters for high-level radiation. And you, what you heard it going off on is this little disc of cesium-137. This is a tiny little disc of cesium-137. To calibrate these machines, and to calibrate these machines, this, this will do both high-level and low-level radiation. They use a, a government-issued cesium-137 machine that um, there's actually very few of the civil defense um, calibration machines left in the world. The other product that Shane makes for, for high-level radiation, I actually carry one on my keychain and my wife carries one on her keychain, is a nuke alert, a regular nuke alert. These are, this, this, this meter is about $750. They are not cheap. This is, I believe, around $150. And I believe that they are worth every single penny because if you look at the back of them, it will chirp how much radiation you're getting. So if you're in an event and you don't know it and all of a sudden your nuke alert starts going off, you can tell by how many chirps just how hot the zone is you, you are in and if you're going towards a hotter zone. It also will, if you, you know, start calibrating yourself, it will, it will explain to you how many, how many rads you've actually, been express, uh, you've actually been exposed to. My original idea for this week's column were these Russian meters. This is called the DP-5V is usually what you will find it. This is a 5A. I don't know what the difference, because this is Cyrillic. These are Russian characters. The DP-5V is usually this green one, and then there's also this brown one kind of thing. Um, and I originally was interested in these because they purport to register both high-level and low-level radiation because they use two types of tubes. One of them is a high sensitivity tube and one is a low sensitivity tube. For Shane's device here, they use some electronic gadgetry to measure what is called time to first count. 
So the, the computer that's in this actually uses the same GM tube that's in your low-level Geiger counter. And those Geiger counters, I've showed you in a, in a prior article, that even the most expensive of them will blank out at high-level radiation. The, the tube that they use, the SBM-20 tube, primarily the SBM-20, and all of the other tubes like it, they have a, a statistical top of counts per minute that they can count. And it is nowhere near what you will encounter in a true radiation event. As you can see, a, a regular, because this will do also low-level radiation. So this thing goes crazy when I when, when I expose it to, to, to even this little disc of radiation. But this little disc of radiation is not dangerous radiation. You can mail this in the US mail. You can walk around with this in, the, in your shirt pocket. Not that I would. Um, but it's, it's actually really low level radiation. And this little disc will blank out most meters. Uh, most Geiger, Geiger meters. I found a couple of, of um, home kits that are in a prior article that it didn't actually blank out. But even those, the, the tube itself, statistically, the, the, actual, the actual makeup and engineering of the tube cannot handle above a certain level of counts per minute, somewhere around 200,000 counts per minute or something. And then it just saturates. So what Shane did for his devices is he figured out that if you turn off the tube, you turn off the electronics and you keep turning it back on and off, that you can actually measure how quickly the tube saturates or time to the first time it clicks. And that's how you can measure the higher rates using a regular GM tube. That's why this, this device, if you can afford it, I've done an article on it before, no one seemed to care. I think, I think he said one person called and, and bought one. Um, but if you can afford it, being with the, you've already seen recently the nuclear leaks in Miami and in New York, and how quickly they're covered up, it, it is a great, a great investment, because radiation is going to be part of the collapse. I've explained this many times before. There's no doubt that radiation is going to be part of the collapse. It has to be because of all the nuclear power plants. And the thing about the nuclear power plant is, as, as, as opposed to a nuclear bomb, is that a, new, a nuclear power plant gives and keeps on giving. In Chernobyl, they put a, a, a cement sarcophagus over the, the nuclear accident there, and it's been melting into the earth ever since. They actually have to now replace the sarcophagus, and hundreds of thousands of Ukrainian people were, exp were exposed to crazy levels of radiation to build that sarcophagus. Fukushima is still being covered up today. Um, they have not released proper numbers. So having your own radiation device is really, really important. I'll explain more about that in the article. These Russian devices, supposedly, because they have two tubes, I'll show you the, the this is the wand, this actually came with one of my kits. This is a wand replacement, and these are not the tubes, these are called thyristors, and it did not come with the extra tubes. Suppose, I guess you would just use the same tubes. There's a SB12 or 23 or something that goes here, and this is for the SBM20. So what you're supposed to be able to do with these is you're supposed to be able to click them down and it will switch to the SBM20 for low level radiation and then it will, if you click in this tube, the SBG, whatever it is, um, tube, it will go to high level radiation. And supposedly it is a less sensitive tube that can actually measure the high rates of radiation. I can't comment on the high rates because I did not send one of these yet to Shane. I may actually do so to see if he gets anything on them, but but I did not get anything on this disc. So, and they, they are working, the lights are coming on, and that, and, and that was a challenge to begin with, as, as I'll show you in case you're interested in one of these. I do believe in redundancy. I think that you should have more than one type of device. I strongly suggest these things. It's about a hundred bucks to get them calibrated. There's a ton of them for sale on eBay right now. Bill Clinton actually ended the civil defense program. And these things have slowly been coming onto the market by the tens of thousands. And they work, They've uh, many of them have pre-calibration dates on them. This one was just calibrated uh, by Shane Service. 
and and like I said, for a hundred bucks plus the the cost of the meter and shipping, you can ship it directly to Shane um, from eBay, which is what I've done in the past. And I did that. My first one I did maybe 15, 20 years ago. This is not a new thing that I've been having Shane calibrate meters. And 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 I I really think that having some redundancy is a good idea. These this machine actually says 1987 on it. These machines were made after Chernobyl to, um, for the teams that had to go in there and work. And you can see them with the stick. The, many of the kits come with the stick. You can buy them with this green box. And the green box has like disposal bags in it and uh, earphones. If you want earphones, many of the earphones are dry rotted. Um, and it, it's got the strap and, and it's got this 12 volt I'll show you the, it's got a 12 volt adapter for the meter, but I haven't been able to get the 12 volt to work. And in fact, the getting them to work at all has been a challenge because, I'll just show you the back of this one. There's, there's the, the brown one you have to unscrew with a screwdriver. The green one has this handy battery compartment removal thing. So the problem with these is that they take a Russian battery Fortunately, all batteries are 1.5 volts, <laughs> unless they're a combination of other batteries. All battery cells are 1.5 volts, so they will take an AA battery, but the compartment was not made for an AA battery. It was made for this size battery, which is a Russian and supposedly European battery. I have not found this in a, in a European battery, but this is a Russian. I don't even know what the battery is called. Um, why do I have one? I'll show you why I have one. Is that I actually did some searching around and I found that this four and a half volt European battery, it's called a 3LR12, that this European battery has three of these in it. And so I cut one of these open and put them in the meter, but they were dead. The guy from eBay sold me dead. Even though these say 2017 on them, they are dead. Um, so that was a flop. I did get the meter, the light to come on, and the, and the circuit test to come on with these, these double A's. I'll show you that I've got a circuit test. Oop, maybe I boogered them playing with it. Probably did. Let's see if I can get them to... The double A's can be taped in there pretty effectively. Yeah, I'm not getting circuit test on it. Um, could be, I gotta rebend the pins. I'm not gonna bother with it because all that happens with a circuit test is the needle just pegs over and that's it. And then even on 200, on all of these settings, the cesium, the cesium disc didn't have any effect whatsoever. So if you're going to rely on these meters, it could be that they're valid for um, high level radiation. I did not get these 12 volt things to, to work either. So I, I have several of these and I did not get them to work either. Um, so I don't know. I don't know what the story is if, if these are just all junk and that's why they're selling them on eBay, suckering Americans or what, but it, they didn't work. That's all, I can, that's all I can tell you is they didn't work. Um, you can you can get one of these. These are roughly 150 bucks with shipping from Russia or Ukraine. You can get one of these for the same price, and you're not going. There's this is an advantage. You can carry this around on your keychain. If you I I don't think I could. I don't think I could get the clicks. I might be able to put get the clicks. I'll hold this against the microphone for one second. So I'll have to check it later to see if the if you could hear the clicks. You can actually put this to your ear and you'll hear it clicking and it'll let you know that it's working. And the batteries in it are, I have like a 12 year, there's almost no milliamps at all. It's a micro, micro milliamp that it uses to monitor the radiation. So it's like a 12 year shelf life on the battery. And if it dies, if you, you put it to your ear and it's not clicking, Shane will replace it for free. The only weakness to this is I actually lost one of these because somehow in my pocket, it got pulled this way against my keys. You can see I carry a lot of keys. Um, and, and it pulled through this 
and then this got lost. I tried to carry this just in my pocket for a few days. Eventually it just fell out and got lost. Um, so that's the only real weakness to this. Otherwise, this is an, it, this is an absolute must-have. Everyone should have one. Um, if you have any idea of what's really going on in the world. So that's the, that's the, this week's topic on radiation. I, I wish I could tell you that I had some luck with the DP5Vs. I did not. If you want to buy one for an experiment and experiment with it, maybe I'll give you one of mine. I don't, they're just not, they're really not worth, worth bothering with. Um, if you want a really, uh, a really good meter that will do low level and high level radiation, these are 750 bucks and as I said, I had some batteries blow up and it. it's the first time they said they had ever seen that happen. Historically, that's really, you don't want to take me fishing either, believe me. I have a history of, of just being really bad luck. Um, so, the, the and th this actually, I'm not gonna go through all the features on it because I have in the past, but this thing actually will turn itself on and check the radiation for you periodically if you wanted to get this and not have to get the nuke alert. It's a, it's a really cool thing, and, and they stand behind it. They give you, I think it just actually blew away. I was gonna show you the calibration sheet that they give you for it. They give you a calibration sheet when you get it to show you the, the errors that it has, the, the percent of error off of the actual rads that they are, that they're showing you. And, you know, when you're up into, into almost a thousand rads an hour, you're dead. So this, you know, this is gonna be your nuclear power plant meltdown range is in here. Um, and she's pretty tight in that range. I could go on and on about the topic of radiation and all of your different options for it. But I, I think that at the end of the day, I think that you've got really three, three options that I think will will get you through whatever you need to get through. Those low level meters that I've covered in the past, even the cell phone ones, will help you to see if the food that you are eating is contaminated with radioactive particulate. Food does not get radioactive, water does not get radioactive, but they can have radioactive particulate in them. And if you ingest those, it is even more damaging than being exposed to pure gamma radiation. Um, some of my old articles explain this stuff a little bit deeper than that. The, for the high level radiation, if you just need to know if you're in a hot zone, as I said, I think personally your best buy is this nuke alert. If you want some redundancy, having one of these, at least one of these calibrated with a recent calibration is priceless. If you have the budget, go get yourself a Nuke Alert ER. They are really an incredible device that was genius in the making. From a guy who's actually really passionate about people surviving what is coming, he believes it's a nuclear war. I believe it's actually power plant meltdowns, but it's coming. And we will see you next time.